Welcome. This is TJ from URLaw.org. Today we're going to talk about winning court processes, and really what we think is one of the simplest winning court processes. If you've got someone coming after you, an agency, a lawsuit, that sort of thing, uh, really an undamaged party, a non-victim party type of situation happening, uh, you might want to pay particularly close attention because a lot of people have been seeking remedies in the uh, sovereign and patriot movement for years, and they really keep missing the boat by making it more complicated than it really is. I hope that in this short video I can get you a really good concept of what seems to be working, why it's working, how it's based in equity, which is what we really want, yet so many people are way off in left field trying to get those things and don't really understand why they're not getting it. We're not about sovereign or patriot movements. We're not about all capital letter names or UCC ones or uh, you know glowing in the dark, floating on the cloud theories. We're just trying to stick with what works and what's actually going on in the court. See, so many of us think we have to prove something when we go in, prove who we are, prove our status, prove our standing. You know, your standing certainly has to be proved. You have to be a party of an interest in what's going on. Uh, but you don't have to prove your status. You already have it. You're one of the people. And if these people are committing some sort of uh, theft or fraud against you, you need to be the one to bring that up. And that's a winning strategy for winning. So we're going to talk about requiring the right of subrogation and not consenting. Remember that URLaw.org is a private member association. We do not give legal advice. We're just discussing principles and studies that we've all joined together and uh, learned together from. Uh, if you want to find out more about URLaw.org, go to that website and find, about, find out about the free membership as well as the premium membership, which offers quite a few more features. So what is this big legal remedy? Well, first of all, subject matter jurisdiction is absolutely the one thing I think everybody should be focused on. Not so much, I'm not the name, and I'm not crossing the bar, and I'm not doing all these things. Yes, we've discussed those things, and they might be factors, but they're not going to be what wins your case. So we want to focus on something that will win most types of cases. Child support, lawsuits, credit cards, mortgages, tax issues, criminal matters where there's not a true victim or, or somebody you've been harmed uh, financially or, or physically and or traffic matters and uh, so we want to go in there and find out what's really going on so subrogation is a very important concept to understand as all court cases are actually commercial transactions even if it's criminal and they make a claim to your securities to settle the charges or the claims and they do so because you fail to do so. So this is the art. When the prosecutor comes in, he's bringing in a bond. Now that bond is created in your name, but you fail to make a claim to it. And that bond could be used to set off and settle the claims or the charges or the bill. I think it might even work in a bankruptcy court. I don't know. We'll have to see if some members try it. But imagine being able to set off and settle every case peacefully and get them to do it for you without having to play any special games, be an expert in trusts or equity, uh, spend years studying it. Just one simple concept. So let's talk about the definition of subrogation. And we have the lawdictionary.org forward slash subrogation as one definition up here. The second one I like better, but this one will get you started. The substitution of one thing for another or of one person into an, into the place of another with respect to rights, claims, and securities. When the prosecutor comes in, he comes in with a bond. You fail to substitute your place in as the beneficiary and creator of that security and use it to settle and settle, set off and settle the uh, case. That's basically what we do by an error when we go in there and enter a plea or just take a lawyer and don't open our mouth. We don't want to do that. So, subrogation denotes the putting a third person who has paid a debt in the place of the creditor to whom he has paid it, so as he may exercise against the debtor all subrogation and substantial rights, which the creditor, if unpaid, might have done. So, in other words, you're brought in, they, the name, that all, you know, this is where the all caps name might come in, you don't have to play this game though, uh, but that's a debtor. And you, are the, the man, are the surety for it. Uh, you need to come in and say, wait a minute, no, I, I'm the creator of this. I have the equity here. And so the equity by which a person who is secondarily liable for the debt 
and has paid it is put in the place of the creditor. Now, people run around out here saying, I'm the creditor, I'm the creditor. And all I'm saying is with this one move, you put yourself in that position. You don't need a bunch of UCC1s and papers filed. So this entitles you to make use of all the securities and remedies possessed by the creditor. The creditor comes in, first of all, it's the prosecutor or the plaintiff at the moment. But once you make your claim because they created it because of your existence, you're now the creditor. And that's all you need to be a creditor. You don't have to go run around with a bunch of papers and proving anything. So in order to force the right of exoneration against the principal debtor or contribution against others who are liable in the same rank as himself. Let's look at the second definition. I think this clears it up quite a bit. Remembering, they're bringing a bond in. They wrote it on your name. You're the creditor. Your existence gave the credit existence. Okay? Just like when you sign an insurance policy, you create a credit instrument. Or a mortgage, you created a credit instrument. All right? This is happen this is the court is the place where all this happens. And you need the court to exercise it and take care of it for you. So let's look at this other definition of subrogation from legal dictionary dot the free dictionary dot com forward slash subrogation. I like this definition because it really does actually spell it right out for you. Remembering, if you've studied equity, which is a very advanced thing that a lot of people study out there, uh, I've, I've seen people give classes on it that takes, they seem to take years to explain it to you. But in reality, it's just done with one simple thing. There's a bond there. We want to make our claim to it. And if we don't make the claim, then we're dis, in dishonor, and they literally steal the bond and go make money with it. Don't do that. At least that's the theory of how this works behind the scenes. And we've seen plenty of evidence of it, which is why they seem to respond. So, the subrogation of one person in the place of another with reference to a lawful claim, demand, or right, so that he or she who is substituted succeeds to the rights of the other in relation to the debt or claim, which is the charge or the bill of the, whatever the case is, and that even if it's criminal, and its rights, remedies, and securities. So, let's say that again. He or she who is submitted, substituted, succeeds to the rights of the other in relation to the debt or claim and his rights, remedies, or securities. So you're substituting yourself and you're telling them, you need to, I am the claimant here, I want you to substitute me in as the right to the securities to exercise them. That's all you're really doing. And then that sets off the charges. There are two types of subrogation, legal and conventional. Legal subrogation arises by operation of law, whereas conventional subrogation as a result of a contract. Now, people have argued, oh, these are admiralty courts, and they got gold fringes around the flag, and blah, 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 blah. Throw all that out. Yeah, it might be true, but it's not relevant to winning your case. So let's focus on what matters. So what you're doing is uh, you go in these courts, and they want to get you into a contract. They want you to waive and give up and volunteer into their system and walk away from your securities. That's what they want you to do. So if that's all you need to think about, you don't need to worry about whether you trip up and say your name or you know you have a driver's license or a US citizen. Just throw all that out for a minute and just look at this. This is what's happening at the moment. All right? You have a right to come in here and make this claim. The purpose of subrogation is to compel the ultimate payment of a debt by the party who, in equity, and good conscience should pay it. The subrogation is an equitable device used to avoid injustice. Now, this is where we talk about equity. People have taught about equity. I'm going to give you the simplest way to ever look at it. You want equity, right? If you brought something of value in, or they created something of value in your name, the equitable thing to do would be to allow you to say, hey, that's mine. Use it to pay the bill. That's equitable, right? So that's what equity is. So you're saying, I want you to exercise my right of subrogation and use your instruments to settle the debt. And for someone to come, by the way, when you come to court and you want to sue someone, sometimes the judge will ask you for a bond. Why? Because you have to bring equity in case you do damage to them. Well, prosecutors and uh, plaintiffs typically need to bring a bond as well. Now, they may or may not do it, but that's what they're supposed to do because they may damage you. Well, now you're saying, hey, I want to use that bond to set off the debt because you created it in my name. Does that make sense? So, legal subrogation takes place as a matter of equity, with or without an agreement. 
So in other words, you just walk in there, just you say, I want my equity. The right of legal subrogation can be either modified or extinguished through a contractual agreement. So you could waive this. It cannot be used to displace a contract agreed upon by the parties. Conventional subrogation arise when, arises when one individual satisfies the debt of another as a result of contractual agreement that provides that any claims or liens that exist as security for the debt, that's the charge, the bill, whatever the claim is in the court, to be kept alive for the benefit of the party who pays the debt. So you're saying take the security that you brought into this bond, pay the debt with that. That settles the charges. It is necessary that the agreement be supported by consideration. However, it does not have to be in writing and can be either expressed or implied. The consideration is the bond that was brought in in your name. You're just utilizing it instead of walking away from it and letting them profit from it while you go to jail for not doing what you should have honorably done, which is issue the credit. Well, that's what you're doing. You're issuing the credit. It was issued before you got there. You just need to tell them how to exercise it. <clears throat> Uh, the facts of each case determine the issue of whether or not subrogation is applicable. In general, the remedy is broad enough to include every instance in which one party, who is not a mere volunteer, pays a debt, for which a second party is primarily liable, and which in equity and goods conscience should have been discharged by the second party. So in other words, the prosecutor brought this charge in. It probably has no standing in law, so you should have him discharge it but you don't direct them to do it. This is the way we're not trained to do it. They tell you to just get a lawyer and shut up. No, you should walk in there and make this happen. So subrogation is highly favored is a highly favored remedy that the courts are inclined to extend and apply liberally. Well, actually, they have to. As far, as far as what we've been able to find, they really have to. The ordinary equity maxims are applicable to subrogation which is not permitted when there is an adequate legal remedy. Now, all these guys are running around saying there's no more courts of equity or there's no more, you know, throw all that stuff out of your brain. Here it is. It's telling you the ordinary equity maxims are applicable to subrogation, which is not permitted when there is an adequate legal remedy. Okay. The plaintiff must come into the court with clean hands and the person who seeks equity must do equity. So I seek equity, so I must implement equity. That's what it's saying. So if you don't do it, you're in dishonor and you go to jail or you lose. So you're fighting the wrong issues when you go to court. The remedy is not available when there are equal or superior equities on, in other individuals who are in opposition to the party seeking a subrogation. Trust me, nobody has a higher claim to your uh, equity than you because you created it. The remedy is denied when the person seeking subrogation has interfered with the rights of others, committed fraud, or has been negligent. This is where it's very important. This will probably not work if you've defrauded somebody, you've harmed them, you've stolen from them, you've killed them, you've raped them, you've robbed from them. In other words, you've done a harm. You've been negligent. This is when equity gets thrown out the window. This is why people say you have to have a damaged party for, their actually to, for the court to go forward. Well, that's technically true, but they do it anyway, don't they? Because you don't come in and actually turn the court into the proper transaction, which is this, subrogation. People are missing it. The right to subrogation accrues upon payment of debt. The subrogee is generally entitled to all creditors' rights, privileges, priorities, remedies, and judgments. By the way, you're the subrogee when you ask. If you don't ask, you're not. So again, the subrogee is generally entitled to all the creditors' rights, privileges, priorities, remedies, and judgments, and is subject only to whatever limitations and conditions were binding on the creditor. He does not, however, have any more extensive rights than the creditor. So, you, you know, you can't go do harm and hurt the other guy, you know, but he brought this thing in, the prosecutor, the plaintiff. You need to take it, make your claim to it. You become the creditor. This flips the case around. It kind of makes you the, the plaintiff. And now you have the creditor's rights, privileges, priorities, and remedies, and judgments. Did you have to do anything about filing UCC1s or changing your name or taking your birth certificate and having it authenticated? No, none of that matters. You're there. You already have your status. You just need to act like a sovereign, if that's what you want to call yourself. And forget about all that other stuff that they're going to get into. They're going to try to dissuade, talk about everything but this. And they will try to avoid this issue. This is at least what we've seen so far, and it makes sense that they would. Because this is their money machine. And uh, we're not trying to take anything from them. We're just trying to take what's ours and put it to our use. 
That's all this is. If you didn't get this, go back and watch this again. We have a full description of this and these written instructions as well as several other questions you can ask before the court. Uh, in the premium member area, if you're a premium member of URLaw.org, free members will get part of this. They won't get the full amount. The full information is in the premium area. So here's our comment. Um, this applies directly to any court charge you have. You have the highest equitable claim to matters involving your name, a state which the court has made. Let me fix that typo there. Uh, involving your name, which is in a state which the court has made an account of or of securities, a security out of. Therefore, requiring the plaintiff or prosecutor to certify your right to subrogation when you ask for it. Just ask for that. Don't make it any more complicated than this. Keep this simple. This turns the tables and makes you, really, the plaintiff and orders them to settle the accounts. So you show them to just simply ask. So this has been tested with live in court situations and is quite effective. If you listen to one of the recent audios, I think it was from the week of November um, uh, 15th, 2017, we have one person on there who walked in and simply asked this one question. I demand my right to subjugation. And we're not moving on from this point until we're not moving on until we get that resolved. He stayed on that. They try to get him off subject, but he simply says, "Well, but before we can proceed, I need the prosecutor to certify my right to subrogation. Just you make them acknowledge it. You know you have a right to it, and once they certify it, it's yours. Equity is done. And then you say, now I'd like you to sell off and settle the account. And that's probably the judge's job, as trustee, there to sit there and." Handle the accounting for the case, whatever it is. So you got to get out of the mindset that it's this this written statute that they came up with. It really isn't until there, until, unless there's a harmed party. This is all that's going on. So you could even write a letter. I, I don't know if this would work, but somebody you could try it. Will the plaintiff or prosecutor certify my right of subrogation? And send a copy, of course, to the prosecutor or, or plaintiff, and a copy to the court. Always copy all parties if you're not sure. That's the rule of thumb. I don't know, but I just assume you should notify people. Uh, if you already have an attorney, maybe show him what you plan to send to the judge. He probably will try to tell you you're crazy not to do it. Um, he'll probably run away from or discourage you because it kind of exposes the game that's keeping the whole system running on full profit for them. The legal industry is a machine. It's an industry. And, uh, but you want to send this letter privately to the judge in chambers, and again, a copy to your attorney or to the prosecutor and plaintiff. Give everybody a notice, um, but to sign it as living soul and ask the question, I want somebody to certify my right to this. And if they try to deny it, well, then they're really in dishonor. They're really, uh, th there's a serious claim you could make at that point. Um, but just get to that point and see how it goes. Don't let them stop you from exercising your right of subrogation. But you must demand it to get it. If you get off on talking about anything else, traffic, this, that, statute. Listen, there are great arguments for those things. There's great arguments for subject matter jurisdiction on traffic, tax, property taxes, whatever. There's plenty of that. We have plenty of that material on the website. But let's just do the first things first. Let's get into the court the right way. And this kind of throws out some of the previous theories because we really have narrowed it down to a simple thing to do. So anything you else have been trying going in, you might want to try this first. Don't play the name game. Don't have to say you're a sovereign man on the land standing on your tippy toes or walking on the clouds. Just stick to ask. Go in there, give them your name, and ask the question. They won't hit you for not appearance if you give your name, right? But just simply stick to the subject what you're there to do. Tell them, I'm only here to take care of this. That's it. All right? Uh, you could get a lot of legal ling lingo, but you don't really need to. Just stick to the one thing. Uh, there are several testimonials on a four-step script and stories in the premium member area developing. And if you're on our premium member calls, we'll hear more of these discussions in the upcoming calls. So until then, thank you, and please visit URLaw.org.